Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here today to film Olive's new nonfiction November tag. Nonfiction on booktube tag more specifically. I've written my answers to the questions on the computer down here, so if I look down, that's what's going on. And so question number one is how much nonfiction do you read? I would say typically a third to a half of my reading is nonfiction. Depends on what I'm focusing on that year. So at the moment I have read 38% of nonfiction this year and and I'm hoping to get it to 50-50 by the end of the year. I imagine Nonfiction November is definitely going to help with that. That happens like every year. Last year my nonfiction and fiction reading was perfectly evenly split 50-50. So I really want to do that again. It just depends on how Nonfiction November and then December goes. Number two is what kind of nonfiction videos do you make or do you want to make on booktube? I would say I mostly make TBR and wrap up nonfiction videos. I don't get really fancy because of time constraints. I really enjoyed making, maybe a year ago, I made a video recommendation of nonfiction things that included books and uh, podcasts and articles um, having to do with Charlottesville and like what ideas informed how I reacted to the things that happened in Charlottesville. I really thought that video was awesome. I felt like everybody's reactions to it were really good and that people really took something away from it and I learned too because I made my own like TBR as a result of that video and what I wanted to keep learning about post Charlottesville. I'll link the video above if you're curious to watch it. That video really did take a lot of time to put together. Videos like that are things that I want to make. I just sometimes don't have the time to do that sort of thing um, if I also want to get some reading done. Question number three is what's your favorite subgenre of nonfiction? I don't know if there's a word for what I look for in nonfiction, but how I described it to myself is books about race, class, and gender, though I really enjoy memoirs as well. But definitely what truly compels me and what I keep coming back to and what I'm always excited about something new being published is any conversation having to do with race, class, or gender. It makes me feel like I'm back in school again and sometimes I miss school. Question number four is do you have a favorite nonfiction book? And I thought it'd be fun to go off of what I said about race, class, and gender and pick one of each. So under race I would say my favorite book is Ghetto Side by Jill Levy. This book uh, blew my mind a couple years ago when I read it. I want to reread it and I want to actually listen to it because the first time I read it I only just read the, the text and I feel like listening would give me a different experience but that book is amazing and it just looks at the system of policing and also looks at the perspective of victims of violence and gun violence particularly in this town in California and it's just amazing reporting, I think. For class, I picked Evicted, another fantastic book. And it does deal a little bit with race, but I think most of it has to do with poverty and um, being evicted from apartments that you're staying at and um, the relationships that form between people and communities to help each other out and then sometimes how those relationships really tear and, and falter. And it's a fascinating book because of how the author integrates himself in the community and learns about all of these people. And the third one for gender, I put A False Report, which was my favorite nonfiction book that I read last year. I listened to it on audiobook and I thought it was very, very compelling and I just could not stop listening to it at every chance that I could. And after I finished listening to it, like nothing compared that I was listening to on audiobook and I spent like another three weeks trying to find a suitable audiobook. A False Report has now been made into a Netflix series with actors. It's not like a documentary series, which I think would have been probably better, but it's still a very good series. And it's a book all about police making a woman recant her report of being raped by a stranger in her apartment and um, connecting that situation with a series of rapes that were happening in another state um, that were all being committed by the same serial rapist. My favorite part about this is how there's two women cops and detectives that are really involved and really want to solve the case. I'm losing battery so I need to go get my charger. Be right back. I should have thought of that before I started filming, huh? We're back. Question number five is what do you think keeps people from wanting to read more nonfiction? 
I think it's just people not knowing what they're going to like, being unsure about where to start and how to get into it, how to figure out what they do like. I think the more people are exposed to nonfiction, they figure out what their tastes are, what they like in a writing style from an author, what topics and issues they're interested in learning more about. And it's gonna take some duds, I promise you, <laughs> to figure out what intrigues you and what compels you and what you find interesting. Question number six is why do you like nonfiction? My answer to this question is always sort of like truth is stranger than fiction and I think that's true for sure but I think more of why I like nonfiction is because it is real and it feels because it is real that it is more pressing to my attention personally. It just feels a lot more important to me the fact that what I'm reading is real. It happened to real people. It has to do with real systems and institutions that we live in and we are currently existing under. So learning perspectives of people who are going through things informs how I see my world as well. Question number seven is what's a nonfiction book you read because of booktube? Plenty. Savage Appetites probably is the most recent thing that I read based on a booktube recommendation and that was from Olive. Um, it was a very gritty true crime book. Anything by Caitlin Doty that I've tried or read has been because of booktube and how much booktube loves Caitlin Doty. Brain on Fire by Susanna Callahan was a book that I really anticipated because of booktube and I really enjoyed after I listened to it. Another one is Unmentionable by Therese O'Neill. Another really great, funny, interesting book that I learned about because of booktube. Question number eight is what's the best nonfiction book you've read lately? Definitely the audiobook of The Only Plane in the Sky, which I just finished maybe a week and a half ago. I'm still thinking about it. It was it was just an amazing way to construct timelines and a and a whole history. It was just fascinating how they got all these narrators doing character work and just helping you learn a little bit more about 9-11, especially as a person who was eight years old when it happened and was in like in a classroom and didn't really understand the magnitude or like the repercussions of that event. I think hearing it from people who were actually like on the ground and experienced it was fascinating. The audiobook is really long and I listened to it in like three days just because every chance that I got I was listening to it. Question number nine is what are some of your non-fiction reading goals? Kind of mentioned this earlier but I hope to get 50-50 fiction non-fiction by the end of the year. I have to read a lot of kids fiction books in December and early January but I'm hoping that a lot of nonfiction gets read this month and in the beginning of December. Question number 10 is what's your advice for incorporating more nonfiction into your reading diet? I recommend going on your library's Libby app or Hoopla app and searching for nonfiction audiobooks and just seeing like things that might sound interesting to you. Maybe listen to a sample of it. If you're looking for something to listen to while doing chores, I think that's the best option. Sometimes when I'm listening to fiction it's a little bit hard to do chores and listen to fiction. Doing chores or walking my dog and listening to nonfiction seems a lot easier to me. If audiobooks are just not for you, I would just look at topics and issues that are important to you, then finding books that are about that. Just think about like what you enjoyed learning about in school, you know, something that you want to learn more about or a person you want to learn more about and go from there and see what your library has. I say also try to see what other people are really reading and see if that inspires you to pick things up because you want to have conversations about those topics, like the plethora of books that have been published this year about Me Too. Just so many people that have been reading these books and so when I talk about them other people want to talk about it with you um, and I think that just adds layers to your nonfiction reading just having conversations about it and reactions about what these authors put together in their books or other really popular nonfiction books this year like Becoming by Michelle Obama a book that like everybody should read and if you've read it then you can talk about it with other people I think that also is a great way to get into nonfiction Find a buddy. Bonus, give us some recommendations of nonfiction booktube channels that you love. I just went through my like YouTube subscriptions and I realized like I need to I need to follow some new people. Some of the channels that I used to watch have stopped making content. I mean we all go through that. So I need to like you know fluff up my subscription page. So I went through the nonfiction November, like I searched it on YouTube and then I watched like 
10 videos just to see people who have similar taste to me and I subscribe to a few so let's hope that helps. I would also say Heidi from My Reading Life. I love her channel. Sometimes we read some of the same things, sometimes we read really opposite nonfiction things but I just like hearing her thoughts about them even if we're not reading the same things. I would also say Maria from she changed her YouTube channel name, I guess, Maria Alexander. She reads very similar nonfiction to me. She has been making less booktube videos recently, but she made one for this nonfiction November talking about her TBR, and it made me so excited when I saw her face on my subscription feed. I was like, yes, Maria's here! So definitely Maria. Brie has come back to making booktube videos. What? So check out Brie at Brie Hill. We read some of the same kind of like memoir things, um, but I'd say her reading tastes are very different from mine. I just like watching her and she makes a lot of like vlog e type videos. Even when she's like reading romance, which I don't read that much of, I just like watching her and seeing what she's up to. So I'd also say Deboki from Okie Doki Boki. She's for example, the reason that I read Bad Blood this year because she just wouldn't stop talking about it and I was like, yes, I know I need to get to it, but you keep talking about it so I need to get to it sooner than I anticipated. It was a great book. She has kind of a, a different perspective than I. It's more about like science and um, academia. It's still fascinating to kind of hear her talk because I like the way she talks. So. Yeah, she's the reason I also want to read that book about Uber, Super Pumped, which she's talked about a lot lately. I need to read that. So thanks so much for watching this tag. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in my next video. I'm hoping to put together one about my week one of Nonfiction November 2019 to see how I'm doing and what's going on. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye!